Okay, I, um, nice to meet you again. Uh, my second topic today is about airway management in pediatric ICU. Actually, this is a very important topic. Actually, it is a daily work in ICU airway management in children. One of the important topics you will see always in ICU, in ward, in ER. This is our objective today in our lecture we'll try to cover. We'll try to go very fast on anatomy, ex airway examination, oxygen supply, a review basic airway maneuvers, the airway adjuncts, bed and mask ventilation, advanced airway techniques, and sobraglottic airways. Um, this, as you know, we have upper and lower airways. We'll, our lecture today will be about management of upper airway mainly. This is laryngoscopic view of the airway. Airway examination, we'll mention nothing specific for airway examination. It should be part of your general examination of your patient. Uh, we have in pediatrics, many patients may have some dysmorphic features, have micrognathia, retrognathia, have the big tongue, or have temporomandibular joint abnormalities. We should always take uh, attention of these abnormalities because it could be an issue during intubation or managing airway of this child. Um, there is some scores that can be done on evaluation of airway. Um, honestly, we are not familiar to do in pediatrics. It's mainly done by NFS. They are doing it on an elective basis of examination of the patient before shifting to OT, uh, to operation room, and before intubation. But this is where, as you can see, it's a very simple maneuver. You simply can visualize the, the view of the patient's mouse, ask him to open his mouse clearly, and you can evaluate his mouse. You can see class one and the class two, almost clear airway. You can see three and four. This is one of the difficult airways you can see just to have idea about your patient airway before you decide to uh, manage him. First, if you have one patient who has a problem in breathing, he cannot breathe, his saturation is not normal, uh, he's desaturating, what is the first step you will do for your patient? Dr. Uh, Rehab, you can read the chat with us. Okay, I think uh, it was for the previous chat with Dr. Atea still. Okay. If you have a child who is he's sick, who is cannot breathe well, or he can, or his saturation is low, you have to start with oxygen supply. This is the first step you have. Yes, adjust the position, yes. Exactly, this is the next slide we'll talk about. First, you apply oxygen for your patient. As Dr. Atea mentioned, we have low flow oxygen of, N, of oxygen, and we have high flow. Our low flow includes the first, if you can see on the right, your first two pictures, the nasal prong, then the normal nasal mask. This is low flow oxygen supply. How much we can apply for the nasal prong oxygen? How much flow you can use for the nasal prong, for this one, first one? We can use up to, yes, four to five liter you can use for nasal prong. For the next one, the normal oxygen, this one you can use from six to 10 liter per minute, not less than six and not more than 10. If your patient is still not maintaining saturation and this, uh, he needs more oxygen, you will go to the high flow oxygen system, which is a non-rebreathing mask. Here you can use more than 10, 10 to 15 liter. Yes, exactly 10 to 15 liter per minute. So now we give him oxygen. We'll be sure that his saturation now is better. So go for, Next slide, as we mentioned, yeah, for positioning, and this is important maneuver to adjust your patient position. It will help you to open her airway and uh, help him to breathe. And sometimes all what your patient needs is to adjust her, his uh, position. We have two positions, as you see, the head tilt, chin maneuver, and the jaw thrust maneuver. As you see, the head tilt and the, and the jaw thrust, well, what is the difference when to use a head tilt and when to use jaw thrust? Any idea? You can use head tilt chin maneuver for most of patients, but if you suspect cervical trauma of your patient or spinal trauma, better to use your thrust uh, maneuver to avoid injury of his spines and spinal cord. Next picture, you can see the effect of opening the airway and the positioning of your patient. You can see, you, can, you open the now, his airway, and he will breathe comfortably now. Yes, exactly, cervical injury or spinal injury, as we mentioned. So this is the effect of opening airway of your patient. We have some devices also we can use to maintain our airway, our patient's airway is open. One of them is the oropharyngeal airway. 
uh, as you see, we have different uh, sizes of the uh, oropharyngeal airway. Uh, when, when to use this oropharyngeal airway? For which patient we can use this one? You can use this one for the unconscious patient, exactly. Why? To avoid gag reflex, which can cause aspiration or regurgitation or vomiting or aspiration for that patient. So usually you should use it as comatose or unconscious patient to avoid gagging. You can use this during uh, bagging. If you decide to do bagging, you can use this to open his airway. You can do suction through this one. How to choose the proper size of oropharyngeal airway? Yeah. You have one way like this. We mentioned the photo from the middle incisor like this to the angle of mandible, or you can use this curved start of curved part from the angle of the mouse to the angle of the mandible like this, and this will be the proper size. Don't use it for too small or too big uh, oropharyngeal airway. As we mentioned, we can do bagging through it. It can help you uh, in a good way to do bagging through it. We have another uh, device also we can use in a patient who we cannot use oropharyngeal airway. Yeah, sorry, this is the how to insert the oropharyngeal airway. You can use, like in this photo, an inverted direction, like from A, this A, then in middle one like this, then you will invert it 180 degree like this, and it will be fixed in position. There is another device which is called the nasopharyngeal airway. We can use this for a patient who is conscious, who has intact gag reflex, Uh, it's a, as you see, soft plastic or rubber tube used in a patient who has, as we mentioned, uh, intact gag reflex. But it's contraindicated if you're suspecting basal skull fracture to avoid injury of the brain. How to choose the proper size of this one? From the nostril to the tragus of the uh, ear. This is the proper size of the nasopharyngeal airway. How to insert? You can insert like this photo direction the same way and push it through the nostril and you can see the position of nasopharyngeal airway. Also, you can do suction through the nasopharyngeal airway and you can also use it during the bagging and you can keep it if you have patient with upper airway obstruction. The other uh, device we can use and we need to use in this patient the airway suction, suction catheters. We have soft catheters and we have rigid catheters. We have different devices for suction, either portable or wall-mounted devices. We should be familiar with each one of them. We have to choose proper size catheter for your patient. We have to be familiar with the maneuver of suctioning itself. We have to oxygenate the patient before attempt of suction for more than 10 seconds. And be ensured that he has 100% of oxygen. And the, your suction trial shouldn't be more than 10 seconds to avoid hypoxia. And also don't try to go deep with your cast to avoid uh, gag reflex or aspiration or vomiting for your patient. So we now give him oxygen. We adjust his position. We let suction. We put oropharyngeal or nasopharyngeal airway. We open his airway. But he still is not breathing well. So the next step, we have bag and mask ventilation. We have bag, we have mask. For the mask, how to choose the proper mask? The face mask, we have different types and shapes uh, and sizes of mask. Your uh, rubber mask should be, as you see in the, in the picture, it should cover the uh, bridge of the nose, then the cleft of the chin. Should not cover eyes, avoid squeezing of the eye. Should not be so, so uh, small or, or so big. Better to choose a transparent mask. It will be better. You can see the color of lips, and if the child have vomiting or irritation, you can assist during the bagging. Then we will go for choose the bag. The bag. We have different types of bag. We have the self-inflating bag, the one we are familiar with and we are using everywhere. There is flow inflating bag used by anesthesia uh, doctors mainly. The self-inflating bag. This is the self-inflating bag. There is a small bag, pediatric, and there is neonatal bag and adult bag. Usually we use the pediatric bag. Uh, sometime in older children, we will use the adult one. We should be familiar with the bag and its uh, parts and how to assemble the bag, how to connect and reconnect each part of the bag. And it has many valves to control the in and the out of flow and the pressure. We should be familiar with this. 
This bag needs to be connected with oxygen flow 10 to 15 liters per minute. Always be sure your bag is connected to oxygen reservoir. Why we, we always need the bag with the reservoir? To ensure that you are delivering uh, high concentration of oxygen to your patient. Uh, near 100% of oxygen. <clears throat> so now we choose the proper bag and the proper mask of the patient. How to do bag and mask ventilation? You can see here what we call EC clamp technique. This EC clamp is important because it do two things. See, as you can see, thumb and the index finger around the top of the mask, sealing the mask on the face of the patient. That's why always remember C, it's for sealing, to seal the mask on the face of the patient. E is the lateral three fingers on the lower border of the mandible to push it up and forward. So you will open your airway by E, you will do sealing by C. And always make sure that your E is going near to your C. Like in this photo, we'll try to see this video together. Next, sorry. This will show you about bagging and uh, the EC clamp technique. I select the correct size mask and grasp the body of the mask between the thumbs of both hands to spread the cuff with the fingers. I apply the mask starting with the top of the mask on the bridge of the nose. I bring the mask down over the face and release the cuff when in contact with the skin. This pulls the soft tissues of the face into the mask and enhances the seal. I use my non-dominant hand to place the index finger and thumb around the inlet port of the mask. I place the tips of the other fingers of this hand on the jaw, with the small finger posterior to the angle of the jaw to provide jaw thrust if needed. I lift the patient's face into the mask. I attach the bag and ventilate at approximately 10 ventilations per minute. Each ventilation is delivered over one second. I watch for evidence of chest rise and ask an assistant to auscultate the chest to ensure adequate air entry. <clears throat> so this is a proper techni technique during using bag and mask. We can use one person technique, as you may see on the video. There is another technique called two person technique. If you are two person attending the resuscitation of the child, better to do uh, uh, two person technique. One will do easy clamp by both hands to ensure good sealing and the opening of airway, and the other person will do bagging. Uh, observe always chest rise during bagging. Avoid giving too much large tidal volume to avoid air leak, and deliver each breath slowly over one second and look for chest rise. If no chest rise, you reopen the airway, adjust patient position, verify uh, that there is good seal between the mask and the face. Now we did bag and the mask ventilation, but you decided this patient is, needs more, more than bagging. So we'll go for advanced airway. By this we mean we are going for intubation. We have different ways of intubation, either orotracheal or mesotracheal, and each place is familiar with uh, one of them or both of them, uh, up to you if you are familiar with any of them. Sometimes we use digital intubation, or sometimes if we have difficult or unsuccessful intubation, we'll go for surgical airways. Why we need to do uh, intubation for a child? For a child who, who cannot maintain his airway for any reason, to protect his airway, or if we are going to oxygenate him, or for ventilation, or are going to deliver some medications. How to prepare your child for intubation? If you decided to do intubation, how to be prepared for intubation? Usually there are steps before intubation, even in emergency situation, you have to have, uh, you, you, you have a skeleton in your brain or your mind about intubation. First, we have to prepare the patient. From the first slide we mentioned, we already prepared our patient now. Yes, Dr. Asma, I, uh, next slide will answer your question about digital intubation. So we'll prepare intubation now by 
Positioning the patient, open his airway. We can put oropharyngeal airway. We do back and mask ventilation. We oxygenated him. We give a uh, high percent of oxygen. Now his patient saturation is 100%. That's we mentioned by preparing the patient. Then you have to prepare the equipment you will use for intubation. And prepare the team who will do intubation and plan and prepare your plan. You will always have another plan if you suffer from or you face a difficult intubation. The equipment we are using in ventilation, uh, in intubation. What are the equipment we use in, during intubation? First, you need endotracheal tube. I think we're all familiar with this endotracheal tubes. We, most of us used it before. We have different types of tube. We have the cuffed tube and the uncuffed tube. And here in pediatrics, you are familiar with cuffed tube. I know our colleagues in Egypt, May they are not familiar with the cup the tube. Yes, you can see here, this is the cup the tube. As you see, there is balloon at the end of the tube and connected with cuff outside at our, the other end of the tube. Here you should uh, check your balloon before intubation by injecting air in this cuff and you see it is inflated, then redeflate your tube again. This uh, device in the middle, this stick is called stylet. Usually we use this stylet, it's a metal stylet we use to straightening the tube. We put inside the endotracheal tube, like the last, like last uh, photo you can see. This to make your tube moldable and the easy to move with you during the maneuver. How to use the, the proper size of the tube? There are equations to choose your tube accordingly if you will use cuff the tube or uncuff the tube. If we, uh, most of us attended BALS course, you know from BALS, there are different sizes of tubes. For the cup the tube, we'll use the size according to age of the patient in years divided by four plus 3.5. This is the size of your cup the tube. If we use uncuffed the tube, you will use the age divided by four plus four. For example, if your patient is six years, so I, I will divide six by four, so it's 1.5 plus four if I use uncuffed the tube, so I need 5.5 tube. If I will use cuff the tube, so 1.3, 1.5 plus 3.5, so I will use five sized tube. This is the proper size of tube, and you usually keep 0.5 millimeter above and below. If you choose five, always keep 5.5 and 4.5 tubes are ready uh, bedside if you uh, need during intubation. Uh, there, is, there is no special age for cup the tube, but, but usually in pediatrics, cup the tube are preferred than adult because it will secure the airway, avoid aspiration. You can manipulate the leak during the ventilation. Um, some people who are working in units, especially in units, doesn't like to use cuff the tube because they will, maybe they will be intubated for a long time. I'm not sure why the reason, but I noticed that most of uh, neonatologists don't prefer to use the cuff the tube, but in pediatrics, better to use the cuff the tube. So we choose the now the tube. Then the next device we will use for intubation is the laryngoscope. These different uh, types of laryngoscope. We have a straight and we have curved blades laryngoscopes. You should know there is the handle. You should be familiar with the handle and how to use and check the light, a battery of the handle. And this is the Miller laryngoscope. This is a straight one and this is the most common one used in pediatrics. There is curved with one called Macintosh and there are another types. Usually we are using Miller um, size one and two in pediatrics. This is the most common used in pediatrics, but sometimes according to patients, you may use different uh, sizes. And you should know how to assemble the laryngoscope, how to connect the handle with the blade and how to check uh, the light uh, and how to fix it during intubation. This is what I meant to Dr. Asma by uh, digital intubation. There is now recent laryngoscope, what's called the video laryngoscope or glidoscope. As you see, this is a blade and this is the handle and it's connected digitally with a screen. So you don't need to lock by yourself to patient mouse to, uh, to, to see the field. You can see the field in front of you like, like endoscopy. You can do it. So this is a, what's called the digital or glidoscope. This is a digital. Uh, intubation. I hope I answered your question. The depth of tube, uh, 
uh, this question from Galaxy 7. Yeah, we choose the tube after insertion of the tube. Usually, uh, depth is uh, size of tube multiplied by three. So it shows the tube five, you fix it on 15, but you have to check the, the entry and then you will uh, confirm with X-ray later on. But roughly you can multiply the size of tube by three. Okay, so we we'll go for next slide. So what, what is meant by difficult intubation? Meant that you have a trial, more than three trials to intubate your patient and you couldn't or the trials take more than 10 minutes, that will be called the difficult intubation. Um, if we have difficult intubation, what is your next step? This is what we mentioned during the uh, preparation of our patient. We mentioned that we should always have a plan for uh, difficult intubation. Either you will go for uh, consultation of an assist or consultant or whoever to help you, or you will go back to resume uh, your bag and the mask and ventilation, or you need to cancel the intubation if possible, which I don't think it's possible in our pediatric because we usually not intubating the child on an elective basis unless he's feel good to do procedure, and mostly our intubation are an emergency basis, so we cannot cancel the intubation, or to go for, as Dr. Rodina said, we can go for tracheostomy, which is a surgical airway, or before surgical airway, we have what's called uh, laryngeal mask or supraglottic airways. But I want to go back one slide before we get something during intubation. What do you think we need to give for our patient during intubation? Sorry, I forget this one. What the medication you will give to patient during intubation? Sedation. Yeah, you need to give sedation to your patient before intubation. Some people will give midazolam, give analgesia like fentanyl. Some will give morphia, some will give ketamine. Some others will give uh, must be yes, paralytic or muscle relaxant, but, but take care that muscle relaxant here is a double way agent. It can help you in making your patient relaxant. He will not fight, he will not uh, clench his teeth against the laryngoscope, especially the big children, but if you couldn't intubate him very soon and you couldn't do proper bagging, you may lose your patient. So always be sure that you need your muscle paralysis. But if you are going for rapid sequence intubation, which means your patient was not prepared and he's coming from home, he's in shock, he's in a coma or whatever, he needs rapid sequence intubation, you have to use muscle paralysis. You have to. But if you are preparing your patient before, you have to judge does you need to use muscle paralysis or not, and if you are ready for next scenarios or not. This, uh, as you see this sheet, this is done by our PICU, it's exclusive for our PICU Mubarak Hospital, we did by our staff. This is uh, ready, ready to use according to the weight of the patient, all medication used during intubation by concentration, by dilution, by amount to be given by ML to patients, that's all you need to ask your sisters as to give midazolam, give fentanyl, give muscle paralysis. Don't, no need to calculate or give her the dose. She will look at the chart according to patient weight and she will give the dose and it will make it easy. Also the emergency medication in case the patient have cardiac arrest or arrhythmia or any emergency, also all medication are there. Yeah, if you will give muscle relaxant, you have to give atropine also to decrease the secretions. So we'll talk now about sobraglutic airways. As we mentioned, if you have difficult intubation, this devices, I need you first to see the, what is this device we are talking about. This is the called laryngeal mask airway. This is the device we use in a patient who has difficult airway or difficult intubation. This can be inserted into the pharynx to allow ventilation and the oxygenation, and sometimes we are giving anesthetic medications or gases through. Consider the alternative if you have uh, unsuccessful intubation. It doesn't require direct visualization of vocal cords. How to choose the size? You can see the size mentioned on the, in, the, in the LMA itself. It's mentioned according to weight. For example, below 5 kg or from 5 to 10 or 10 to 20 kg, it will be fixed on the LMA itself. No need to memorize or, or measure the size. You just choose according to patient weight. It is uh, also like you see, this is rubber, rubbery part. You have to be sure it is deflated deflate through the cuff as a balloon outside and they deflate, lubricate with some lubricant and they insert 
like you see in this way, in this direction. As you will see, it will slide and cover the glottic opening. And some uh, LMA have port, you can do suction through, and uh, you can also connect it to ambu bag or even to ventilator to do ventilation through for some time. If you decide to keep it for some time, to have help or have someone who will assist you. Or if you are going to do procedures, some most of patients who are doing MRI, for example, I need heavy sedation and you are afraid of having uh, airway problems, they will use LMA for the procedure during the sedation. After sedation, patient wake up, they can remove the LMA. So we avoid intubation in this patient. <clears throat> As we see from advantage, advantage of this LMA is that it is rapid. You can use for ventilation and oxygenation, um, uh, causes less cough during insertion, and the low incidence of sore throat, and it can you be used in difficult intubation. But the disadvantage you can expect that can also uh, cause aspiration because it will not protect patient also can vomit. It can also cause gas insufflation, especially if you do bagging. If you give too much ventilation or pressure, you can have air leak. This is the last slide about uh, surgical airways. As we mentioned, if you have unsuccessful or difficult intubation, you have to go to surgical airways. Always keep in mind that you, you, you should be ready for this scenario and have help by surgical or ENT. We have either tracheostomy or precocyrotomy, I hope, so we don't need, inshallah, any time we do intubation. The last uh, slide in our... Uh, lecture today about the assistant of intubator. What we want from most of you, if you are not working in ICU, to know how to assist in intubation. By time, you will learn how to intubate by yourself, but to assist first, you have to be familiar with the endotracheal tubes, laryngoscopes, stylets, how to choose proper tube, how to fix the laryngoscope, uh, keep your uh, endotracheal tube ready, lubricated, the cup deflated, and you should be also familiar with bag and the mask ventilation. You should be on the right side of the intubator, holding the tube in one hand and holding the suction in the other hand. You may be asked by the intubator to do cricoid pressure during intubator, during intubation. And after intubation, you may be asked to check the endotracheal tube position after intubation. So always remember ABC during manipulating a patient who has airway problem. There are several ways to manage the patient's airways, adjust his position. And don't forget the basics. Maybe all the patient's needs, as we mentioned in the first slide, that he needs only to open his airway and do suction, and he will start to improve. And I finished my lecture, and thank you. Ready to receive your questions.